Welcome back everybody. It's been a very long time since I have made a video. Um, I've been super busy with all kinds of summer activities between my son's baseball and trying to get in some summer activities like camping, fishing, um, seeing my family, enjoying the beautiful weather up here in the state of Maine that I really haven't had time to sit down and make a long video and edit the videos. Um, you probably have been seeing my shorts throughout the summer here if you've been following the channel. But now, um, finally gonna go ahead and make another long video. Actually, I got several to make. The big thing for me also is that last year, um, I went a little crazy. I got um, way too many trees. I bought a lot of nursery trees from different types of nurseries and turned them into bonsai trees. I also took a lot, I mean a ton of trees out of gardens that were growing through people's gardens and destroying the gardens like sugar maples and choke cherry trees um, and some other um, types of trees and turn those also into little bonsai trees. So although those trees have taught me a lot, I've learned a lot from them. They're, they're very small, very young trees. Um, some of them don't really have the characteristics I'm looking for. Um, so I'm, what I've been doing is selling some that are really neat and then the other ones I've actually been just taking them out of the pot and planting them back um, you know, into nature and letting them grow naturally. So. I've kind of been trying to eliminate um, a bunch of the trees that I do have so that I can actually start working on some more advanced trees, some older trees like this tree right here. So this is a Procumbens Nana Juniper. Uh, this is going to be the first one of these, uh, this species of juniper that I've ever worked with. And I thought this one had some really neat features to it. Um, I can make kind of like an informal upright tree with even a little bit of a cascading arm going on if I want to. But right now today, my main goal is I just got this tree today. I want to go through and I want to trim it up, get all the branches that are growing out of the inside of the curves off, try to clean up down below, maybe pick a front to the tree. I might even do a couple major cuts just to eliminate some of the lower branches so that I can actually see the trunk of the tree. And um, just, I just want to give this an overall kind of good cleanup. And then in about two to three weeks, the weather should be, you know, well enough along into the beginning of fall that I can go ahead and repot this into a bonsai pot with some good soil. I've already gone ahead and put a little bit of fertilizer in here because this thing does need a little bit of fertilizer and this is a great time of year to do that. So it's already got some fertilizer in it. I'm going to go out and douse it with water after we're done with it here on this video. And, um, and then, again, we'll come back in about three weeks and I can work with this tree. I can actually go ahead and wire some of the branches out, maybe do a light trimming and kind of get it into the rough shape that I'm looking to, 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 you know, to go with this tree, which I'm not 100% sure where I want to go with this tree yet, but I do think it has a really neat shape to it. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of potential fronts to the tree. And there's also a lot of potential like cascading arms like this one right here. There's some down below. So there's, there's definitely a lot I could do with this tree, but I don't want to rush this. I want to take my time, really think this one through and, um, you know, make some good choices on this tree to make it as beautiful as I can. So uh, stick with me here. Like I said, all we're doing right now, going through cleaning up this tree. I've already sanitized all my tools with alcohol because this morning I was doing some trimming on my patio and I think we're ready to go. So what I'm doing right now is there's a wooden stake that has staked this tree up because I'm pretty sure this type of juniper is more of like a ground crawling juniper. And if you don't do this, the tree is just gonna grow along the ground or be a cascading tree. So this has been pinned up for quite a while. There's some serious wire bite. Um, I'd say it's a good quarter of an inch of wire bite on this lower one. It's not as bad up top, but what I'm gonna do is cut this off. And so far so good. I don't see it like just dropping, but I'm gonna kinda you know, work this stake out a little bit and see does the tree fall over or is it rigid enough? Has it grown in this position enough to stay upright? If it does, the stake's gonna come out. If it doesn't, I'll have to like work it back down in 
and then re-secure it with some looser wire so that it's not biting into the tree. Okay, so stake is loose. Let's see what happens here as I work it out. I guess we're gonna have to break it off because it is really in there. All right, so I don't know if you can see the shape of this trunk. It's pretty drastic. It kind of comes up and goes down and this way then back towards me and then it kind of curves over at the top and comes down into this cascading branch over here. A lot of movement, um, definitely a lot of potential fronts here, but um, it's gonna take some time to really figure this one out. It's, it's uh, quite a lot of different options here. So I wanna make sure I'm not cutting off anything that I could potentially use in the future. But at the same time, there's some branches that are just, if it's on the direct inside of a curve, it's gotta come off, it's just never gonna look right. So, um, I'm gonna go at it here. super sharp they actually stick into your fingers and you have to like pull it out so grab the glove this way you can just go through and kind of like break off all these dead all the little branches that just fall off it'll go a lot faster so Okay, so as you can see, I mean, I think the front's gonna be somewhere around there, just um, by looking at it really quick. But as you can see, just by doing that, you can actually see the shape of the trunk much better, especially if I flip it around to the back side. You can see the shape of the trunk a lot better. Um, it almost kind of separated the tree by itself without actually cutting off really any branches at all and um, everything looks a lot greener because we got rid of all the brown. So just doing that, you know, I, I typically do that with every tree that I buy. I'll go through and just get all the dead stuff out. Sometimes on some of these junipers, like dirt will build up because the, the needles will actually start to decompose in the cracks of the branches and it'll just build up dirt. I'll get that all out of there. Sometimes I'll even wash them off with the hose and then it really kind of gives you a better idea of what you have to work with, what the tree could look like um, before you actually start cutting off branches that might, you know, actually you might be needed in the final result of the tree. So um, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to turn this tree around a bunch of times, kind of pick a front. If, if I know for sure I found the front and I want to expose the trunk, then I will go ahead and start clipping off some branches. If I'm not 100% sure, then I'm just gonna leave it for now and um, continue on with the tree, so. Okay, 
Okay, so regardless, there's two positions that I thought could be the front. I can't say 100% which one it's going to be, but I can say 100% that if I do a semi-cascading arm off of this tree, it's going to be with this. It's almost like a whole separate trunk. I don't know if you can see it, but inside here, there's basically two trunks. I'll zoom in later and show you when I get some other branches out of the way. But I know I'm not going to use this branch right here. It's too far down in the trunk. It's not going to make a good cascading arm. Same with the one below it. And then the one up here, I'll have to see what it looks like when I get these out of the way. But my guess is that one's going to go as well. So I'm going to take the bottom two branches off, take a look at this branch again, and then I'll go ahead and clip that one out if I feel like it's going to interfere with the design of the tree. Okay, so this is one of the potential fronts. Um, I feel like there's good movement with this coming up and then towards you and then back and around. It really allows you to get more movement out of the top of the tree. But to me, right about just there, um, would also be one of the main potential fronts. This provides, I think, the most movement in the bottom of the trunk and all the way up through the top. The problem is when you get to the top, it goes that way. It goes behind the tree. It comes down here on this cascading branch that goes behind the tree. So you kind of lose that top curve, which is okay if we build a nice canopy up here, right, that kind of comes down. It's okay to lose that movement that goes back. Um, and especially since then we have this, it's actually a secondary trunk. I didn't even know that before because there was so much crap in here, but there's actually two trunks. So we have a dual trunk tree and that kind of is going to help with this cascading arm coming off to the side. Um, I really think, you know, seeing that now that it's a dual trunk that I should actually continue this whole side tree down here and just have it continue down. So. I think there's a lot of really good potential here, but this is where I'm gonna stop for tonight. I don't wanna to go too far. I don't wanna wire anything. I think it looks much, much cleaner. Um, obviously, there's still a little bit of stuff here and there to clean out, but um, I think overall, this allows me to you know, get some fertilizer in here, let this thing kind of bounce back because it, it definitely needs some fertilizer. I'll put some sealant on all these little cuts I made down here at the bottom and um, yeah, I mean, like I said, only like two or three weeks from now, this thing will go into a bonsai pot and um, I'll be able to start wiring it out so that during fall when these things are putting on their vascular growth, it can, you know, beef out a little bit and retain that, um, that shape that I want. So, but definitely a lot of, you know, small branches to wire out up top. Some are definitely going to cut off. I'm just going to swap right now. I'm dead. Um, but this tree definitely has a ton of potential and I'm pretty excited to shape this thing into a cool little bonsai. Actually, it's gonna be a pretty big bonsai tree. It's almost three feet tall. So um, pretty excited about this. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see this transform into an actual bonsai tree. Um, for now, it's gonna go back out of my patio, get some sun, some fertilizer, some water, and uh, it should be good. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, I will have more full length videos coming out here soon. I apologize that I have been kind of slacking on those longer videos, but I'm pretty excited to get back into them now that fall is here and the summer fun is over. All right, have a great night everybody and I'll see you on the next video.